And then people realize, oh my God, it's a volcanic eruption. We found that it's covered with volcanoes. It is tremendously geologically active. There are volcanoes erupting all the time. The Voyager is one of the first New Age space probes. It has surpassed its initial expected lifespan and continues to share data with us, even as it wanders outside our solar system. But space exploration comes with a lot of strangeness, most of which remains hidden from the public. Voyager 1 and 2 space probes have often taken some of this strange information. The space probes take pictures of oddities from outer space, which they then send to the space agencies for observation. However, some of the data these space agencies receive contain secrets often kept from the general public. The real question is, why are these data being kept from the public? What could NASA and all the space agencies be hiding from us? Join us in this video as we try to unveil the secrets of NASA one after the other, starting with this new terrifying image that Voyager 1 sent back to Earth. The twin probes, Voyager 1 and Voyager 2, built by NASA, have stunned the world of science with their discoveries over the years. Having beaten all expectations, the probes are more than a gift to science. However, not all is rosy. Some of the photos and data collected by the probes are downright suspicious. Any data that arouse too much suspicion in the tight science circle are often kept away from the public, who, understandably, are likely to raise dust over nothing. One of these secret photos is the Voyager 1 image of one of Jupiter's many moons. The moon in question is named Io, is one of our solar system's most geologically active celestial bodies. Io is so advanced geologically that it has active volcanoes. Yes, plural. Volcanoes are scattered all over this moon, and it is believed that these volcanoes were formed due to the huge gravity that stretches Io's interior in a process known as tidal heating. Tidal heating is a process that turns rocks into molten magma. This magma is usually formed at the center of a celestial body where the body is at its hottest. Over time, the pressure builds in the planet's core and the melted rocks are spewed to the surface with such destructive force. The presence of such a large amount of volcanoes on Jupiter's moon Io makes it resemble a block of cheese if we want to be comical. It must be odd to know that another celestial body in our solar system has volcanoes. When NASA received the photo from the Voyager 1 space probe, they had to study it to see if the volcanoes were active. NASA, however, decided to keep this bit of information to itself. What the image showed was the image of one of Io's active volcanoes. This volcano was christened Loki by NASA scientists. NASA kept this away from the public because we hardly, if ever, hear of active volcanoes on other bodies in our solar system. Naturally, anything remotely related to geology outside Earth stopped being active long ago. When the Voyager 1 space probe explored Io in the late 70s, it captured up more than five active eruptions on the Moon as it performed its flyby. It even captured one of the eruptions on film. Since the 70s, more than 150 volcanoes have been mapped out on this active Moon. More than 400 volcanoes have been theorized to exist on Io of all the volcanoes on this Moon. The most impressive is the one dubbed Loki, after the Norse god of mischief. While Loki might not be the most impressive or the biggest volcano on Io or even in our solar system, it is undoubtedly the most powerful. The Loki volcano had a record diameter of 202 kilometers, but this is not even what fascinates the scientists and astrophysicists about it. The molten magma underneath Loki is the juicy news. Loki is an expression of what Io is truly capable of. The magma underneath the Loki volcano is often shot with so much force and power that it spews its magma hundreds of miles above its atmosphere and straight into space. Imagine what hot magma looks like floating around in space. Since space is a cold void, perhaps the magma cools and becomes space rocks. Loki's power arrested the attention of the entire science community upon discovery. As a result, scientists and astronomers are often on the lookout for more of Loki's mysteries. You might assume that Loki is being watched so much because of the force of its eruptions. While that may be part of the reasons, it's not the only reason. Loki is very precise with the timing of its eruptions. It keeps a strict schedule for when it erupts, and if scientists' speculations are correct, Loki is due for another eruption soon. Scientists presume that this next eruption will be more powerful than the last. For a volcano that can shoot hundreds of miles into space, one can only wonder how far it would shoot magma during its most powerful eruption.
Julie Rathbun, a senior scientist at the Planetary Science Institute, once displayed a poster at a science congress in Geneva. This poster illustrated how easy it was to predict Loki's eruptions. The volcano is so bright when viewed in the infrared that telescopes here on Earth can easily detect it. This is true because studies over the last two decades have shown that Loki brightens significantly when it is close to erupting. In the 1990s, scientists studied Loki closely and found that it erupted once every 540 days. However, more recent studies have shown a slight change in Loki's eruption schedule. Instead of erupting at a 540-day interval, Loki now erupts after 475 days. One can only wonder what geological anomaly caused such a significant change in the schedule. This change is not to say that Julie Rathbun's predictions were inaccurate. Not all predictions correlate easily. It is usually difficult to predict the eruptions of volcanoes due to many factors that could cause eruptions. Loki is different, though. While many think that Loki is predictable because of its massive size, Rathbun makes us understand that Loki's size makes it more susceptible to the laws of physics when it erupts. The small complications that affect smaller volcanoes should not be able to affect a volcano of Loki's size. Loki's periodic eruption schedule should not have changed. However, Loki seems to have a mind of its own, not caring for the rules of physics. Julie Rathbun, who once correctly predicted Loki's 540-day schedule, acknowledged the fickleness in Loki's behavior. Loki is aptly named after one of mythology's trickiest characters and is not known to behave. Once its 540-day pattern was discovered, it changed its pattern again. Loki did not show signs of stable periodic behavior till about 2013. The volcano does live up to its name. Scientists would not give up trying to figure out the fickle space volcano. They embarked on a new study where planetary scientist Catherine DeClear and her team examined three decades of observation of the Loki volcano. They studied Loki's ebb and flow to find patterns that might explain the volcano's schedule of activity to Io's orbit around Jupiter. Some scientists believe Io's volcanoes are so complicated that they would not follow the orbital trends. DeClear and her colleagues started their study by pinning down the details of Io's orbit, which takes about 1.77 Earth days. This orbit is too fast for scientists to develop a nuanced understanding of the orbit's impact on volcanic activities using Earth-based telescopes. Earth-based telescopes can only observe Io's volcanoes when Io is in their line of sight. However, there are much slower cycles on the scale of several hundred days embedded within that orbit as Jupiter's other moon's gravitational fields pull at Io. Those influence cycles could also affect the tidal heating process that Io experiences. It has been nothing short of interesting searching for patterns in Io's volcanic activities. Tidal heating should produce volcanism that follows specific patterns on the surface and not at other places. One might also expect Io's volcanoes to show specific patterns in time. As scientists try to make sense of the Loki volcano, others gathered all the observations they could find on Loki over the past three decades. In that timeline, scientists' data on Loki was sporadic at best, but in 2013, Catherine DeClear and her colleagues made a conscious effort to maximize observations of the Loki volcano. The result of that focused energy was the most detailed study scientists have ever had on the volcano's activity. The data set was truly remarkable. Julie Rathbun, who is not involved in the new research but also studies Loki, said in a statement that it is really hard to get all the data we want from the ground. The other factor that DeClear and her colleagues focused on was that the details of Io's orbit around Jupiter were not necessarily challenging to study. The issue lies in the fact that orbit is not the factor that volcanologists might turn to first if they've been inspired by volcanoes closer to home, which aren't strongly affected by tidal heating. Much of the processes scientists use in studying Io's geology is based on our knowledge of Earth's geology. We sometimes fail to acknowledge that there are not many things on Earth that are driven by tides. Tidal heating is not something people, especially when studying volcanoes, look out for. When studying planets and moons, tides and periodicity are a few of the most obvious factors to measure. In fact, tides and periodicity are the easiest things to measure. DeClear and her colleagues were inspired by cycles scientists who had noticed plumes streaming out of one of Saturn's moons, Enceladus, which seemed to brighten and dim in tandem with the moon's orbit. They found two cycles in Loki's activities that may be influenced by tidal heating. 
One of the cycles lasts 454 days and the other lasts 480 days. Both of these figures are close to cycles in which the influence of its neighbors tweaks Io's orbit. Realistically, this type of cycle might make more sense in a volcano than a cycle tied directly to an orbital period as fast as Io's. Those are the timescales that a volcano can evolve on. DeClear and her colleagues think that one potential explanation for what is going on in Loki is that the volcano's plumbing cannot respond to tidal heating at the speed of the 1.77-day orbital cycle, leaving only slower cycles to affect the volcano. Understanding how Loki works goes beyond understanding how some planet's weird moon works. Earth and Io are the only worlds in our solar system where it is easy to study volcanoes. Earth's volcanoes are not strongly influenced by tidal heating, but scientists believe that the phenomenon is a highly important one in the bigger picture in the planetary sciences. In our solar system and beyond, this type of global-scale tidally driven geophysics is just not something we have on Earth, said DeClear in an interview she granted at the time. Io was a kind of alien world where you have these processes that you're not able to study on Earth, and if we can study them on a higher level, we can broaden our understanding of geophysics more generally so that it is less Earth-centric and encompasses more worlds. DeClear and her colleagues hope to regularly check on Loki to determine how Io's orbital cycles govern its activities. They calculated when next the volcano would rumble based on each timeline. Within the next few years, DeClear and her team hope to have gathered enough data to better understand Loki's dynamics. It will be quite interesting when we get close to the predicted time of Loki's eruption. DeClear's team can immediately watch and notice when the brightening occurs in the infrared. In the images, when Loki starts to brighten, it is always interesting to watch, and if it weren't for Voyager 1's exploration of Jupiter's moon, scientists wouldn't have made such a magnificent discovery. But you know, however, that it has been 45 years since NASA launched Voyager 1 space probe into space. The spacecraft was built to last only five years but has exceeded its lifespan almost 10 times over. The probe continues through space, sending data back to us occasionally. While the twin Voyager probes were not the first of their kind, they were engineered to delve deeper into space than any of the probes that went before them. Thanks to the data collected by their predecessors, such as Pioneer 10, the Voyager vessels could withstand the high levels of radiation around planets like Jupiter and Saturn. Their initial mission was to capture images of these space giants via flybys. For the longest time, the yawning space between us and the nearest stars was considered a terrifying expanse of nothingness. It was something humans could only see from afar until recently. Astronomers ignored these spaces, preferring to focus their telescopes on the nearest stars, nebulas, or galaxies. However, over the past few years, the two space probes, Voyager 1 and 2, have been sending back the first few images of what we know to be interstellar space. As the first human-made objects to leave our solar system, they venture into uncharted territory billions of miles from home. No other spacecraft has traveled that far before. Their presence in this strange region has revealed an invisible region of chaotic, frothing activity beyond the boundaries of our solar system. When you look at the different parts of the electromagnetic spectrum, that space area is very different from the blackness we perceive with our eyes. Magnetic fields fight and push and get tied up with each other. The image you should have is like the plunge pool under Niagara Falls. Rather than just tumbling water, the commotion and disturbance are caused by the solar wind. Solar winds are an unceasing and potent flow of charged particles called plasma. This plasma shoots out in all directions from the sun. The solar wind clashes with a mixture of gas, dust, and cosmic rays that drift amongst the star system known as the interstellar medium. For over a century, scientists have been working hard to decipher the composition of the interstellar medium, aided by powerful tools like radio and X-ray telescopes. Through their collective efforts, they have managed to piece together that the interstellar medium is made of ionized hydrogen atoms, dust, and cosmic rays that mingle with dense gas clouds where stars are born. The issue, however, is that the precise nature of interstellar medium beyond our solar system has remained a mystery for the most part. This is because the Sun, all eight planets, and a distant disk of space debris known as the Kuiper Belt are all contained within the heliosphere. The heliosphere is more or less a giant bubble formed by the solar wind. 
As the Sun and the eight planets in our solar system speed through the galaxy, this bubble created by the solar winds acts as an invisible shield against the interstellar medium, blocking most hazardous cosmic rays and other particles. The heliosphere is also surprisingly vast, hinting at a lower density of interstellar medium than is to be expected. The Sun's movement through space can be likened to a boat moving across water, forming a bow wave and a trailing wake perhaps with a tail resembling those of comets. However, the Voyager space probes exited the heliosphere through its nose, so there was no way they could determine if the Sun did leave a blazing tail in its wake. According to Elena Provornikova, a postdoctoral researcher at the Johns Hopkins University Applied Physics Laboratory, the heliopause is estimated to be about one astronomical unit thick. Its equivalent in miles is about 93 million. This is equal to the distance of the Earth from the Sun. Since no spacecraft has ever made it out of the heliosphere and into interstellar space, scientists are closely monitoring the feedback from the twin space probes. The Voyagers 1 and 2 are currently our only shot at figuring out what interstellar medium outside the heliosphere is made of and what goes on in interstellar space. Scientists were astonished when Voyager 1 began transmitting unknown and alarming data during one of the observation cycles. The data transmitted from the Voyager 1 showed various impossible scenarios that couldn't be explained by the known laws of physics in interstellar space. Officials from NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory revealed that the mysterious data originated from Voyager 1's altitude articulation and control system, known as the AACS. The AACS is responsible for measuring and calculating the orientation of Voyager 1 and its antenna, ensuring that the probe maintains a direct line to Earth for optimal signal transmission and orientation. Scientists were baffled about the origin of this terrifying signal and junk data that Voyager 1 had transmitted back. The shock mostly originated from the fact that Voyager 1 could still observe, gather, and transmit data back to mission control on Earth. This is an indicator that Voyager 1 is still performing optimally. The only downside is that the data sent back to mission control from Voyager 1 needed to be more useful due to corruption. Remarkably, the spacecraft has exceeded its initial lifespan of five years. Despite having had multiple systems shut down to conserve power, Voyager 1 and 2 space probes have consistently transmitted reliable data throughout their mission and to this day. As Voyager 1 continues its journey and travels 14.5 billion miles away from the Earth, communication delays of over 22 hours make it difficult for mission control to solve any problems that may arise with the space probe quickly enough. After a few weeks of probing for an explanation for the strange signals being sent back to mission control from Voyager 1, NASA finally discovered that the AACS system responsible for keeping Voyager 1's antenna pointed towards Earth unknowingly sent data to Earth through a corrupted computer. Although the data was later found to be accurate, the corruption caused by the outdated system that released the data resulted in the transmission of junk data back to Earth. The speculation about what the data likely contained was that Voyager 1 had encountered some type of cosmic radiation containing charged particles that distorted system commands, causing the switch to the corrupted computer. Corrupted data or not, Voyager 1 has made its mark in the scientific community by giving us first-hand information about what transpires on Jupiter and interstellar space. Unfortunately, nothing lasts forever. As the unavoidable demise of Voyager 1 draws near, we ponder on the discoveries the space probe has made for us. We also ponder on how it has taught us to soldier on when we are faced with new paths, moving with will and resilience. Which of Voyager 1's discoveries most intrigued you? Thanks for watching another episode of Voyager. While you are still here, click on the video on your screen for more quality content like this one.